it encapsulates every aspect of human, human nature. So you have the art, which is maybe the graffiti art. You have um, the dance, which is b-boying. You have um, the emceeing, which is the, telling, the storytellers. And in, in a lot of ways, if you look back at past history, before, even before there was written language, the, the way that people um, communicated was by spoken, by, um, by stories. So, you know, maybe in Ireland they might have, um, they might have st songs that have got stories that are about famous things that happened in, in Irish history. And likewise, it's, it's the same in, not, it's not, it is like the modern folk language, folk music in a lot of ways, because it's telling, it's telling a story and it's actually, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's relating a human experience. You know, if your, human, if your human experience is a positive one and you have a, everything's great, then you're going to be talking about a, a lot of positive stuff. Maybe if, you're, if your experience and your history is not so positive, you might be dwelling on that. But, but it, it just reflects the mood of the singer or the chanter or whatever you want to call it. I guess hip hop is a, is a street culture in that it, it's born out of doing something. It's the idea is you do something creative and there's no resources whatsoever. So you literally you throw down a mat on the floor and you start break dancing, or you're walking on the street. One of you starts beatboxing, the other one starts rapping, and it's all about kind of that's kind of why it first took off is because it's a positive culture where where you can make something with nothing. It's not just for you know, the upper class, it's not just for suburbans, it's just not for, it, it's for everybody who, for, it's, it's an open platform. It's like going out to a, to a park and somebody just pulling out a chair and just standing on the chair and just saying, hey, I want to talk about this today. Unfortunately, a lot of kids growing up nowadays see hip hop as, uh, Kinda of like Eminem, 50 Cent, all that stuff. Um, to me, that's not where hip hop is. That's not where it started off. Back in, back in the 80s, hip hop was uh, actually anti-drug. A lot of stuff was anti-drug. De La Soul, um, Trail Call Quest, um, all, all actually, I mean, going against drugs and taking drugs. Dope, cocaine, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Now, that's what, uh, makes me a bit sad about hip hop nowadays. You look at like a 50 cent and these, you know, they've got smoke coming out of their mouth and stuff like that. I mean, the biggest turn in my eyes was Dr. Dre, who was in a band, who again was anti-drug. And if you listen to one of his, his songs, he actually says not to be taking the stuff and all, and then uh, commercially sell better to take drugs. So therefore he changed camp, which is a bit sad, like, you know what I mean? Because obviously that's going to influence people. For me, hip hop today has not only lost its way, it's lost its soul. For me, hip hop today is all about that. Now that's not to say that there aren't DJs and producers and MCs out there who are still more into hip hop than they've ever been. And, and for them, they live and breathe hip hop. But for me, you know, the, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. The, the underground hip hop scene has been sort of squeezed out it's due to commercial sort of R&B, sort of like, like a commercial American R&B and hip hop, and, and which there is quite a lot of clubs in Belfast that play kind of music now. And you know, obviously, you, you play an underground track and they don't know what to do with it, they don't know what it is. You know, I mean, they don't know how to dance to it. Like it's, it, it ain't jiggy enough for them, right? You know I mean? It's all about just bling, bling culture, big fur coats and crap jewelry, whereas. You know, if you think back to when when some of these artists were smashing their way out of the British scene and people like Roots Maneuver came to the fore, you know, even subsequently if you look at the streets, you know, big hip hop influences there. But these people were wearing, you know, ice white Reeboks and Adidas tracksuit tops and, and you know, t-shirts that they'd had for 10 years. It wasn't about what they were wearing, it wasn't about how much money they had, it was about what they were emceeing about, it was about whether it was real or not. And for me, Certainly in America, it's not real anymore. My, my take on hip-hop nowadays is um, it's not where it was 10 years ago, even 20 years ago. 
it's uh, more saturated, but it's not our fault. It's big corporations taking over the radio stations and programming the people to listen to what, you know, what people really listen to. And it's like, it's not really a culture. It's not really what we thought it was going to be, but I appreciate hip hop for what it is. Luckily, you know, if you know your shit, there's people out there like the dead presidents, for instance, who are sort of flying the flag for music that has content, has some agenda other than ego and makeup, but they're not the bands that you're going to see on the MTV Awards. Once you get paid for anything, let's say it's not even hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Once you get paid for anything, it takes the whole truth out of them because you're playing both sides and you never, you and basically you're creating something that you're never going to control, you know what I'm saying? Like basically hip hop is something that we, we Everybody feels like, I mean, as far as side, I feel like, you know, in some way, we, we created part of it. But then it's a way that we can't control it, you know what I'm saying? And we can't control the commercialism, what's going to go on. We want it, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be, you want to support your family, you want to make a living out of it, so you sell your music, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you selling your music is, is giving money to the system. There's no way around it. It's a big corporation's fault. That's all it is. It's like, I know what good hip-hop is, but I'm not going to force you to believe what real hip-hop is. You know what I mean? It's like, there's like 12-year-old kids that think T.I. And, and fucking Lil Wayne is real hip-hop. I don't think that's real hip-hop, but I'm, 30, I'm turning 30. You see what I'm saying? So, when, the, when little kids tell me Lil Wayne and T.I. is hip-hop, I'm like, I don't think you really know what the culture is about. And they're like, no, nah, nigga. You're getting old. You don't know what the fuck Little Wayne and T.I. is. And I'm just like, no. The problem is you don't know the culture. You don't know what the fuck we grew up on. You don't know what the fuck is going on right now. Unfortunately, lately, in my opinion, I think hip-hop's lost its soul a bit. I think it's lost its way. And I think it needs somebody to come back out and just smash it wide open again. Well, hip-hop suffered the fate of all rebellious music. You know, initially... There's people out there that are really trying to say something, but then it becomes appropriated. People start jumping on the bandwagon and they don't understand that, you know, when people like myself got into music, it was this anti-establishment thing. People started getting into it to be part of the establishment. And if that's what you're aspiring to, you can't really be that radical. And that's why we're in the kind of state we are today where, you know, it's more P. D Diddy and Snoop Dogg rather than people like Chuck D's or KRS-1's. There's very few people that have that kind of political agenda going on.